propulsion. To get to space, we're very much reliant on conventional rocket motors. The basic idea of any rocket engine is to combine and burn a fuel and oxidizer and direct the reaction products out through a converging, diverging nozzle at very high speeds. And the type of rocket used to get us into orbit is all dependent on the payload and where we want to place it in terms of orbit. So some orbits are much further out and need an extra boost to get there, and of course larger payloads require larger rockets. It makes sense, really. But now for a bit of deep space propulsion. Conventional rockets won't get us far in this domain. They run our fuel pretty fast. So firstly, we can look at things called solar sails, which are huge sails. They would unfurl and use radiation pressure from the sun or from ground-based lasers to propel itself. An example of the size of these sails is that at Earth's distance from the sun, one astronomical unit, an 800 meter by 800 meter sail would generate about five newtons of thrust is not very much in the grand scheme, but if you apply that level of thrust against something that has no resistance working against it over a long period of time, you can keep accelerating. And that's kind of the principle of these long range rocket motors. Small thrust, long time. <laughs> Sorry. It has been predicted that these sails, uh, a sail like this could reach. Sorry. It has been predicted that these Pluto were less than five years, and to put this into perspective, the New Horizons spacecraft, which launched in 2006, that took 9.5 years to reach Pluto. Another type of engine we could use is something called the Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, or I'm going to say Vasimir from now on because it's much easier. This is a concept which has been in the works for quite some time. It's currently running ground testing, but there is a hope to get a prototype up to the ISS for orbital testing. Not only would it allow us to get to Mars far quicker than a conventional rocket, but we'd also be able to refuel on Mars, and it may even protect astronauts from the dangerous effects of radiation during their trip. Vasimir uses a power source to produce radio waves. These ionize and heat propellant, accelerating the resulting plasma through a magnetic field and ejecting it from the engine, creating a thrust for the spacecraft. Hydrogen, helium, and deuterium are all candidates for fuel. The bonuses of use of particularly hydrogen includes a dump, uh, uh, acute, uh, you'll, you, you can, you'll do, you, you, words, include, include its abundance in space for refueling. Also, its efficiency as a radiation shield due to its absorbing neutrons. For the secondary radiation, this is likely to be produced when primary radiation interacts with our spacecraft walls. The power source needed will most likely be our nuclear power source. The ISS testing will use the solar panels on the station as the electrical power source, and the ISS already produces hydrogen as a waste product. This could be used as a fuel for the prototype. Vasimir could therefore maintain the ISS's orbit without requiring any additional fuel. So to round up, we're going to use our solid rocket motors to get there, that's what we're good at. And then from there on out we'll probably light something up like a, like a magnetoplasma rocket, and then that will take us to a, our lovely destination. Please don't forget to subscribe for more of my lovely voice.